So welcome back to Sound Bites, the show about good people doing good things in the local food and drink industry. And today, it's my great pleasure to introduce Sean Gallagher of Local Source Market. Sean has been a leader in the local war movement, and not for just a short time, for quite a long time. You know, really, I credit Sean and a few others for really starting it in Nova Scotia. So welcome to the show, Sean. Thank you, Mark. So. Um, Bit of a circuitous route to get to Halifax because uh, tell us a little bit about because you're Ottawa born, That's but right. then right and then where do you go after that? Yeah, so I was born in Ottawa in an international development household, and I had two households in the Glebe before the Glebe blew up, and uh, had a high street that I could just walk to, fetch the morning bread or female bacon for. Uh, brunch and just kind of like lived in a really cool neighborhood yeah. growing up and then in my teens I was kind of a bit troublesome and ended up uh, going to live with my father in Zimbabwe and then uh, South Africa for like four years so those were kind of my formative years and and learned how to surf and kind of caught that bug while I was going to school mm -hmm. and just being a, a local there um, and then after trying at university in Ottawa, uh, doing commerce and a focus on international business. Mm -hmm. I took two years off and got into hospitality. And so I worked at Arc the Hotel, yep. which is the first boutique hotel in Ottawa, and uh, worked the door overnight, parking mm -hmm. cars, shining shoes, delivering papers, and just learning hospitality that way through the, mm -hmm. the ground up. Uh, but I was waiting for them to open a restaurant. And right. So they opened a killer restaurant uh, that was kind of, you know, very designer in the, at the time in the early 2000s. And it was quite an experience because they did everything with the best chef, the best mm -hmm. design, best decor, best training, amazing marketing budgets and really good clientele. Um, so I learned a ton yeah. from the chef kind of kicking my butt. And then you come somehow, you, how does that mean you move to Halifax? Yeah, so in that job, I, I worked every front of house position possible besides front desk. And then the only other option was going to sales or management. Um, they forgot about sort of hiring the right person for their wine list. Right. Which is kind of yeah. up your alley. Yep. Um, so I put my hand up at the time and I was like 22 maybe. I can't remember exactly, but yeah, I was pretty young. And I just said, hey, I want to do this. I want to learn. So I went to every wine shop in Ottawa and just asked questions, every wine bar, talked to the owners, took them out for lunch, mm -hmm. learned about wine. And after I plateaued and all my, my managers and colleagues were like, Sean, you're too smart for this. Get out of here. Go yeah. back to school. Finish your degree. Um, I even passed up offers to go work in hedge funds with mm -hmm. all kinds of highfalutin people and uh, flipped the coin and then it landed on Halifax. It was either Halifax or Victoria. So I get back into surfing and go to school in commerce that had a co-op program. Amazing, okay, and then, and then you kind of get into the hospitality business in Halifax. Yeah. We worked together for a very short time at, right. at a restaurant called Maple way back when. Yeah. Then you start working with uh, other hospitality leaders like Craig Flynn. Yeah. What, what's the impetus then to go from hospitality and say, uh, what did you see at the time that said, I want to do something different, I want to open, at the time, I remember this tiny little market uh, on Charles Street, you know, right. uh, um, and, and you, what, what kind of led you to start that business? Yeah, so while I was studying, it was a co-op program, so I was getting experience while I was at it and working while I was at it to pay for the school. Uh, which gave me kind of an exposure to the hospitality here and what was going on at Chives and Haddon Hall and with you at Maple. Yeah. Um, and then I realized there's a few holes in the market for just kind of like leadership in local food. Uh, and all my classmates were saying, Sean, go into food. This is yeah. something you're passionate about. You're in entrepreneurship. You understand a little bit about the world. Why don't you give yeah. it a shot? And I did. So we opened a sandwich bar at Dal in 05. Yeah. Me and George Christakos. Ah, okay. Another great name of the local restaurants. Yeah, there. yeah. He's, he's infamous now for sure. And he was big into wine and just like bright-eyed, bushy-tailed and keen to help. 
so we did that, did a catering company called Terroir, and it had a tagline, local source catering, because nobody understood what Terroir meant at the time. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the whole point was to get people excited about what's in their own backyard and how to eat with the seasons. Mm -hmm. Amazing. So I figured I'd take what I'd learned through working with all these chefs, even though I was front of house, and I dove into the kitchen and just learned how to cook by opening a catering business. And then from there I said, hey, I've got this beautiful produce, and I've got this space on Charles Street. We need a farmer's market all week long. Yeah. So it's basically a provenience store, kind of like a convenience store that has provenance, and it's just open six days a week. Yeah, amazing. And it was, it, you know, and it really grew from there. So talk a little bit about the ebbs and flows, because obviously uh, local source, uh, really focused on catering, like I said at the beginning, uh, yeah. you opened up the storefront to, to kind of bring a market concept, uh, everyday market concept to Halifax, which wasn't really in existence at the time. Yeah. Um, you've gone through some ebbs and flows. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I mean, it worked out well to have catering and a shop. But in the beginning, the shop was basically run by hippies and people that kind of believed in the local food movement at the time. And the North End was kind of a depressed area and there was only kind of artists and kind of hippie urban kids living there, plus the community that had been there forever. Right. Um, and so we did this little market and I realized, okay, actually I need people that know how to do work. So I went through that process really quickly yeah. and found people that were okay with doing hard work um, and the market worked out. Luckily, and the catering kind of uh, offset it where in the winter months when we didn't have that much local produce to sell, the catering, doing weddings and kind of bigger mm -hmm. events made the cash flow work so that we could buy storage crops mm -hmm. and even like book stuff from farms that they would store for us and then we'd go to the valley, pick it up and keep the shop full. Amazing. And then, you know, you've gone through, you expanded onto Agricola Street, larger space, went through yep. some different concepts. Right. Um, you brought in a partner, not really brought in, it's yeah. just like you, you have a partner now, who's yeah, yeah, a, yeah. a life partner, uh, and who's a partner in the business. So tell us about Krista and her contribution. To yeah, so local. Krista Armstrong is a, is a gem. So I was running um, the catering at Lightfoot and Wolfville, and there was just two preferred caterers at the time before they had their own kitchen. And Krista was running the events there. So that's how we met. And Krista's got an amazing hospitality background, working at Etihad mm. and working abroad for um, the embassy in Beijing. And just done a lot of things, kind of like me, traveled a lot and see, see the world a little bit differently. Uh, so in 2018, she came on and I was kind of like spread thin doing a lot of different things, you know, with a, a, a bar and a cafe and catering and trying to do a distribution company, plus still a shop. Yeah. So she came on board and said, okay, let's simplify this. Let's have a bit of a lifestyle here. Hmm. So we did, we, catering stopped, uh, got rid of the bar and we just focused on retail. And, and retail, we realized that that was kind of the best bang for the buck and, and created the most impact because it fed families. It fed a bunch of different people, all different walks of life, people that were on a budget, people that didn't care about money, and everyone in between. And it started out with you know, artists and um, profs and people kind of in the neighborhood that really liked to cook. And so we said, let's just focus on that. We'll keep the bakery, which um, came about because of catering, and we just do bread, you know, tea biscuits, cinnamon buns, mm. cookies, pies, and we have a prepared, pre prepared foods program from the catering background. Right. So we do all that year round and it keeps right. it full. And that accounts for a good chunk of our sales. Amazing. And it keeps people coming that daily bread kind of back in the Glebe High Street vibe, which was the original vision of doing a shop in the North End, a neighborhood that kind of needed some life. And now we're in the West End and the neighborhood mm. needed you know, something to service it. So we're, we're in a good spot. Yeah, okay, so talk, so locations are Agricola Street and then the newest location, uh, where, where, where's the exact location of that? Yeah, so it's Kitty Corner to the Forum. It's Windsor and Almond, 2790 mm -hmm. Windsor, and it's an old gas station. Yeah, and it has parking, it's easily accessible, yeah. it's easily walkable for those living it's in the great. West End. It's great, it's yeah. great, so, so kids come in and they know they can get an apple, yeah. little daycare tours come in, and 
get get That's apples awesome. on the way out, and uh, you know, it's servicing the neighborhood quite well. Yeah, amazing. So you've been so like it was we discussed so tied to local farmers and fishers for closing in on twenty years. Um, yeah, you, talk a bit a little bit about. I think you know what, what I love seeing about the, the rise of the local board movement is the creation of community and the idea that of how local can support our economy too. So sure. talk a little bit about how important it is for consumers to to, to buy local. Not you know, um, just maybe even from an economic perspective. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Well, it's been interesting. Kind of everything almost went full circle pre-pandemic till now. So. Pre-pandemic, there was kind of like a steady rise in people eating local, and it was just consistent. And then the pandemic hit, and people realized, wait a second, we need to take care of our own economy, and let's support this. And we have time to cook now. We have the ability to just spend our money wisely. And we saw a huge boom in business because of that. Um, and that helped us make a decision to open a second shop with a bigger footprint and try out a new concept. And then that was like strictly online. Like we switched our Gricola shop into a warehouse and had people pull up on the curbside and you know service people like within a week of the pandemic. And then after that, as soon as the stores opened and all the everything was lifted, people really wanted that in-person experience yeah. to be able to shop and talk to the shopkeeper and be like, okay, what's in season? What's coming next? Right. What do we have? So and, and it really taught us, though, that that time, I'm assuming you agree, would taught us that that there is food insecurity, that supply chains are fragile, that things, yeah. so the more and more we can support local and, and buying local, um, not only are we supporting our local community and the economy in Nova Scotia, but we're yeah. also creating a bit of that security for our own selves that we're not completely reliant on on something coming from somewhere That's right. that we don't yeah. know in the world. So yeah, self-reliance. It's almost yeah. like food sovereignty yeah. is a is a better term for that concept, right? right. Where we're like we can support ourselves. Uh, amazing. And so now we're thinking about eating, and you a big thing for you is eating seasonally, right? So yep. wh what's you know what's in season now? We've had a little okay. bit of a rough last few weeks, month. Uh, yeah. And how strawberry season, of course, but uh, how 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 are they coming along? Yeah. So this year is super weird. I mean, there was that cold snap after a really mild winter that knocked out a ton of fruit and stone fruit, especially. Mm. So. We're probably not going to have any peaches this year. It even hit Georgia. That's how wow. far this little polar vortex dipped. Um, so we're going to have a limited amount of fruit this summer, unfortunately, because of that. And then we had that drought, which caused fires. And then we've had so much rain that now the field berries are having trouble and a lot of things have drowned. So the melon season is pretty much wiped out already mm -hmm. because they're in the wet ground. So today is the first day of sunshine. We've got three days of that and the forecast, so that's so good. These berries are grown in a tunnel, like so they're, they're covered, right. they're at a, a high table, they're ever-bearing variety, so they're gonna be available till September. Okay, but, uh, but, but probably we should buy, be buying our strawberries now because it is gonna be limited It's gonna be supply. a tiny season, yeah, yeah, like it's this week or bust, pretty right. much. And, for, and for you have berries. to pay a little bit more this year because of it, so, so be it. Yeah, I mean, it's a bummer for the farmers, right? Because yeah. they're reliant yeah. on these crops, and if they have crop failures, yeah. they're kind of buggered for the yeah. year, right? So, yeah. Okay. So, there's, it's hodgepodge season, 100%. Oh, cool. I think I'm Irish background, so yeah. I get super excited about new potatoes. Yeah. They're just so much sweeter. Um, I love new potatoes, just like simple on their own, but the carrots are super sweet right now. Um, mm. Garlic's coming up, so we don't have to deal with old garlic right yeah. now, this is the new season. So yes. we've got scapes, which they take off the top, so all the energy goes into the bulbs and we have beautiful garlic end of season. Sounds like we could make a uh, new potato, carrot and garlic scape hodgepodge. It wouldn't be a bad recipe. <laughs> yeah, it'd be nice, totally. I use them all the time in that, yeah. Okay, and then and then local and thinking about supporting local is not just, just products, it's drinks. So what, yeah. are some, what are some of the, the suppliers and drinks that you work yeah, with? Yeah, so I know that you're into the beverage world and you understand that side of things. Uh, Benjamin Bridge, obviously famous for the Nova 7 and kind of breaking ground for Nova Scotian wine in general. They were at, b ahead of the game on the non-alcoholic beverage scene. And they've had this Piquet Zero, which is an awesome drink. And they've launched the pink Piquet, which is 
in my opinion, even more delicious. But there's just been this huge rise of non-alcoholic beverages that are delicious and nutritious. So uh, it's good to support these local farms because it's local fruit. Yeah, amazing. And then the kombucha, these guys are the, the OGs, the Goodmore family. They're winemakers originally from trained in New Zealand, mm. but they're both from here. Um, they're, they're part of the Dharma, Grat, yeah. Dharma Brat group, yeah. which are like, you know, kids of Buddhists. Right. Um, so they make kombucha with like a tea process rather than a juice process. So it's quite subtle and really nice flavors. But so that's just like a good substitute for drinking wine mm. or just to keep your gut health happy, Perfect. so on and so forth. And then this is just a special um, Wabanaki soda and it's a collaboration with Propeller for Canada Day. Amazing. To support uh, local initiatives. Amazing. So uh, buy local, uh, visit local source, uh, Corner of North and Almond, Agricola Street. Uh, thanks very much, John. Windsor and Almond, yeah. Windsor and Almond. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Charles at Agricola. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Okay, thanks, John, for coming on and telling us a little bit about the business. Pleasure. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks. <laughs>